Biden's speech tonight. It was part State of the Union and part campaign speech. The president touting the economic growth under his watch and making the case of how he plans to keep it growing. Not one mention of Donald Trump, at least not by name. Watching the speech closely for us and getting reaction. Sonia Racone is here with the latest. Sonia? Bill, it certainly was part campaign speech in this election year as he hammered topics like reproductive rights, gun violence, the border, defending democracy and his age, calling out his predecessor and opponent while looking to prove he's up for another term. Entering the chamber to chance of four more years from Democrats wearing white in support of reproductive rights, President Biden never mentioned Donald Trump by name, but he used the term my predecessor more than a dozen times. It wasn't long ago when a Republican president named Ronald Reagan thundered, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> now my predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. That's a quote. A former president actually said that, bowing down to a Russian leader, I think it's outrageous, it's dangerous, and it's unacceptable. <laughs> With aid to Ukraine stalled in Congress, the president also called out his predecessor for lobbying Republicans to block a bipartisan bill on border security. We can fight about fixing the border, or we can fix it. I'm ready to fix it. Send me the border bill now. Mr. Biden's guests included Latoria Beasley, a mother impacted by Alabama's Supreme Court decision to shut down IVF treatments, and Katie Cox of Texas, who was denied the right to terminate a pregnancy when her fetus had a fatal condition. If you, the American people, send me a Congress that supports the right to choose, I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. In this election year, he highlighted accomplishments like an infrastructure law. Thanks to our bipartisan infrastructure law, 46,000 new projects have been announced all across your communities. And by the way, I noticed some of you have strongly voted against it or they're cheering on that money coming in. Despite several heckles from Republicans and House Speaker Mike Johnson frequently shaking his head, the president drew a solemn but bipartisan response on the Israel-Gaza crisis as some members of Congress wore the number 153, the number of days hostages have been held by Hamas. I pledge to all the families that we will not rest until we bring every one of your loved ones home. He closed with a few jokes about his age and a serious message about it, saying it's not about how old we are, it's about the ideas. Can't lead America with ancient ideas. It'll only take us back. Not a lot of Republican support in the chamber tonight, of course. And immediately following, Senator Katie Britt from Alabama delivered the Republican response. She is the youngest Republican woman ever elected to the U.S. Senate. What we saw was the performance of a permanent politician who has actually been in office for longer than I've been alive. One thing was quite clear, though. President Biden just doesn't get it. He's out of touch. Under his administration, families are worse off. Our communities are less safe. And tomorrow, President Biden takes his message on the road and will head to Pennsylvania for a campaign stop.